I know that getting older can feel out of your control, but the truth is, a lot more of it is actually under your control than you might think. If you want to slow the aging process, whether it's for your health or your appearance or your cognitive abilities, there is a big thing you can do to slow the aging process. And that thing is changing your diet. Today, I'm sharing scientific studies on the biggest dietary changes you can make to slow the aging process. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I'm a full-time researcher with my PhD, and by day, I conduct and publish experiments of my own, and by night, I share the results of other people's studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And first, I just want to say welcome to the 500 and counting of you who have joined us here since last week. Thank you so much for joining the community. I really appreciate it, and I hope you keep finding all this science stuff really interesting. I also wanted to announce that I have officially launched the Patreon with bonus content on each video, plus other bonus content, and a discussion forum where I'll be answering questions that's a more positive space than YouTube comments and more organized. And also I'm launching, or have launched, the ability to weigh in on what I actually talk about in these videos and what the topics are. So if you're interested in any of that, stick around till the end to get all the details. And now back to the science. And today I'll be talking both about foods that do help slow the process of biological aging, as well as foods that surprisingly don't help, even though a lot of people claim that they do. So today we'll actually be getting into empirical studies to get some evidence-based answers to the question of how we slow down biological aging. And today I'll be talking about biological aging. And the reason the term biological matters there is because it is different from chronological aging. Because as you probably already know, the number of years you've been around on Earth is only part of the story of aging. Chronological aging is how many years you've been on Earth, whereas biological aging is how much the aging process actually has affected your body. And I think we all kind of have an intuitive knowledge that these two things are different because of people, for example, like Christine Brinkley, who at 68 looks a lot younger than a lot of people who are actually 20 years younger than her. So aging processes do not affect us all equally. And a big reason for that is theorized to be telomeres. So telomeres are one of the major biomarkers of aging. And to put it simply, telomeres are essentially the little plastic caps on the end of shoelaces, but for your DNA. So they help protect your DNA from all sorts of processes going on that try to damage our DNA, like oxidative stress and inflammation. And for a more concrete illustration of how important telomeres are for the aging process, People who are born with genetic diseases of short telomeres actually have an accelerated aging process. So for example, these are children who have a disease that causes short telomeres. And as you can see, they've had a really accelerated aging process. And that's not only showing up in their skin, but also in their systems and their body. And in the general population, shorter telomeres have been found to predict more cancer, poor immune function, heart disease, diabetes, skin aging, dementia, and all-cause mortality. In general, telomeres get shorter as we get older, but chronological age actually only explains about 10% of telomere length. So really, telomere length is more of a marker of how much biological aging processes have affected us. So someone who has a really poor lifestyle and poor genes at 40 could have shorter telomeres than someone at 70, who's really kept up with diet and stress reduction and all these kinds of things that affect telomeres. And two of the most major causes of telomere shortening are oxidative stress and inflammation. And one of the biggest, if not the biggest, determinant of oxidative stress and inflammation is your diet. So now we're gonna talk about how to get those telomeres to stop shortening so much as you age and also maybe even lengthen them. If you've looked into this whole concept of slowing down aging and preventing telomere shortening, then chances are you've stumbled across the Mediterranean diet because pop science loves the Mediterranean diet. And if you don't already know, the Mediterranean diet is typically characterized by a high intake of fruit, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, and legumes, along with a low intake of meat and dairy and poultry, which is sometimes considered a separate category, along with a moderate intake of fish, olive oil, and alcohol. And eating a Mediterranean diet generally does predict longer telomeres or an increase in telomerase, which is an enzyme that actually lengthens and replenishes our telomeres. And most people who talk about telomeres don't talk about telomerase for some reason. I think it's because doom and gloom gets more clicks and attention, but 
I like to focus on the optimism that comes out of science that everyone else tends to ignore, but we can actually increase our telomerase and potentially lengthen our telomeres by changing our diet. But back to the Mediterranean diet, you may have noticed it's a pretty broad, crude measure. Like, do you really have to change all 12 of these dietary components to get beneficial effects on your telomeres? It seems like the answer is no. You can actually focus on the few components that actually help and just ignore the rest in order to get these benefits on your telomeres. So I'm going to tell you about the food components that do help with lengthening telomeres or preventing shortening. And then I'm gonna tell you about the components that don't actually matter or might even make things worse. But first for a little spoiler, the aspects of the Mediterranean diet that tend to get the most attention in pop science and other people you'll see on YouTube and whatnot actually aren't the ones that contribute to health and longer telomeres. So let's get into it. So first I'm gonna list some food types that have been shown specifically by studies to be good for telomere length. The first of these is carotenoids and specifically studies have found that beta carotene predicts longer telomeres. And beta carotene can be found in leafy green vegetables as well as yellow and orange fruits and vegetables. So eat your carrots, eat your leafy greens and other plant foods. Beta carotene is a lipid based antioxidant. So it's gonna help target that oxidative stress and inflammation that eats away at our telomeres. And the next specific food that has been found to predict longer telomeres is actually a natural substance that is specifically produced to protect DNA. And that is the protective coating around seeds. So plants produce this protective super antioxidant coating around their seeds to help their seeds last longer, to help that DNA stay viable longer to produce new plants. And if we eat those seeds, we actually get that DNA protection. And these seeds include what you usually think of as seeds, as well as grains and nuts and legumes, because these are actually all plant seeds. If you plant them in the ground, if they weren't cooked, they would grow for the most part. Obviously some of them will be viable, but I'm a gardener, so I have to add a little caveat. And for the most part, when we go to the store and buy seeds or nuts or legumes, we are getting that nice outer DNA protecting, potentially telomere lengthening coating. But when we go out and get grains, we have to be a little more careful because only whole grains still have this nice coating on, whereas refined grains have had this DNA protecting coating removed. And for our next specific food group, this is actually one that's been shown to be bad for telomeres. So eating more of these foods predicts shorter telomeres and faster aging. And that is meat, especially red meat and processed meat. And for the last one of this category of things that do affect our telomeres, is one that's a little more indirect because it's kind of a funny side effect from a study that did not intend to show this. So I doubt you'll see this anywhere else. But one study tried to show that the Mediterranean diet is good for telomere length. And for their control group, they used a low fat diet. You can probably see where I'm going with this. This study accidentally found that compared to a control diet, the Mediterranean diet was bad for telomere length. So they found that this usual you know, put on a pedestal Mediterranean diet situation, actually predicted shorter telomeres than people on a low fat diet. So this suggests that a low fat diet might actually be better than a Mediterranean diet for having long telomeres. And this again is not very surprising because there's a lot of studies out there showing that low fat diets, especially low fat plant-based diets are really good for all sorts of diseases that tend to afflict us with aging, including cancer and diabetes and heart disease and obesity. So it's not too surprising that a low fat diet is actually gonna be potentially even better than a Mediterranean diet. And now for our second category, things that don't actually seem to affect our telomere length, even though a lot of people assume they do. And the first of those is omega-3 and fish. So a bunch of studies have tried to show that omega-3 and fish are good for telomere length, but they keep coming up with a whole lot of nothing. So it seems like eating fish and even eating just omega-3 from fish isn't actually helpful for slowing down the aging process. And even if fish was at one point good for us, like a hundred years ago, it's now so laden with pesticides and heavy metals, like this is a very known issue, that even if there were some good effects from fish itself, it's now outweighed by all the toxins they just sponge up from the ocean. So as is my new catchphrase apparently, thanks to a lot of you pointing it out <laughs> on a few videos ago, Fish are just swimming pesticide sponges. The second food group that surprisingly doesn't seem to help with telomere length is olive oil. 
So a lot of people love to sing the praises of olive oil because it gets thrown into the Mediterranean diet, but the vast majority of the studies, if not all of the studies that actually find effects, looking at olive oil, compare it to a normal Western diet. So typically the type of fat that people are eating is saturated fat from meat and dairy, which we know is horrible for us. It literally causes brain inflammation and lower cognitive function among a bunch of other things. And so when you replace saturated fat with anything, including olive oil, you're gonna get big benefits because it's known that saturated fat is causing all sorts of negative things. So these studies are saying, look, olive oil is so good for us because they're just replacing saturated fat with olive oil or comparing the two and saying that because olive oil is better than saturated fat, olive oil must be really good for us. But for an analogy here, it's like saying that vaping is actively good for our health and improving our health because it's not as bad as smoking. But really, if we neither smoked nor vaped, we would be a lot healthier than if we vaped or smoked. And I'm not saying olive oil is terrible for you or anything, it's just massively overblown in whether or not it's actually helpful. So if you want the good things that are in olive oil without all the bad stuff and the processing, then just eat nuts or seeds. Like you'll get all the good stuff along with some fiber and a lot more other good stuff. So a lot more health benefits from nuts and seeds than from processed oils, or just eat olives directly. Those of you who think a lot about science have probably noticed that I have been talking about associations here. So foods that predict telomere length. This is still a pretty new area, so there aren't many randomized control trials, and the ones that are out there haven't really been able to find much yet because a lot of them have small sample sizes or poor methods. But one of the most successful randomized control trials, or RCT so far, was published in one of the top journals you could possibly publish this in, so the Lancet Oncology. And they found that a low-fat, plant-based diet increased telomerase activity, which is that enzyme that actually lengthens our telomeres. Unfortunately, one big caveat here is that they also changed other aspects of these participants' lives, like having them do mild exercise. So we don't yet know if it's specifically just the plant-based diet that was related to telomerase activity. Now there is one popular source out there who has said that this study is definitely showing that a plant-based diet increases telomerase activity because another study found that exercise does not increase telomerase activity. Now that inference is not really scientifically valid because we can't use a different study as a control group for this study, and we can't say that because another study had a null effect, there definitely was no effective exercise in this plant-based study. So really the jury's out. I'm not gonna say who this other source is because I have exactly zero interest in drama or throwing shade on anyone else. But what this study does tell us is that we can increase our telomerase activity by reducing stress, adding mild exercise, and eating a low-fat plant-based diet. So you definitely can't go wrong with doing those three things. You will not get any downside to going for a walk and being less stressed. So if you really want to lengthen your telomeres, slow down the aging process, slow down skin aging, prevent chronic diseases and reduce dementia, then I highly suggest following this protocol from this very high impact study that was in a very high quality journal and eating more of these food groups that are going to be good for your health anyway. So even if you're not all that excited about telomeres, eating this way is still definitely gonna help prevent chronic diseases that will kill you. So if you wanna live longer, it's a good idea, regardless to be eating more whole grains, legumes, nuts, vegetables, fruits, and maybe low fat. So the components of the magical Mediterranean diet that actually help with health and preventing dementia in addition to telomeres are not the ones that get the most credit. It's actually pretty much just the whole foods, plant-based aspects of the Mediterranean diet that's actually good for health and dementia and telomere length. And I think the reason that people wanna credit fish and olive oil and alcohol is because they're surprising and they're generally known to not be as healthy as these other components because who's gonna be surprised and excited that vegetables are good for our health? <laughs> Whereas people love the idea that dumping oil on your food or eating a bunch of fish or drinking a bunch of wine is gonna make you live longer or be healthier when really, they just don't really seem to hurt that much. I have a theory that the reason the Mediterranean diet gets talked about so much is largely laziness. So a lot of the scientists who publish about the Mediterranean diet don't actually have training in nutrition. They're like cancer biologists who wanna look at the effect of diet on cancer. So they're like, hey guys, let's look at the effect of diet on cancer. What's a diet that people talk about? Oh look, the Mediterranean diet has been published a lot and it's easy to just measure, so let's just use that. <laughs> so I think 
that the Mediterranean diet is kind of like the science equivalent of a TikTok trend where people just keep doing it because everyone else is doing it. And now for the new stuff I'm launching, thanks to requests and encouragement from you all, I've got bonus content going. So that includes research notes on every episode with extra tips and cool findings I found while researching for the videos that didn't really fit well into the videos or that couldn't really fit with time. And then also extra fun findings between videos that I stumble across that aren't quite enough for a full video yet or are more just food for thought or kind of too crazy to talk about yet because they need more evidence. And also I'm launching the ability to weigh in on what I talk about in videos. So first voting on topics and proposing topics. And then also when I'm researching for a video, I will post that I'm researching for that video and then ask if anyone has any questions or things they want me to talk about related to that topic in the video. So you can help actually determine what gets talked about in these videos. So what stuff I look for and include. And there is also a Discord where I will be hanging out and answering your questions. And the reason I'm doing a separate Discord instead of just hanging out on YouTube is because first, there's this weird YouTube glitch that I mentioned that I literally can't see like a fifth of your comments. So it'll show up in my notifications tab. And then when I try to go to it and see the full thing or reply, it just disappears. So that's been very, very frustrating. And then also YouTube is of course notorious for being a negative place with lots of trolls. So I really want a troll-free, positive, civil, intellectual environment where people can have different opinions in ways that do not involve being crazy. And then I'll also be doing Q and A so you can ask like a big science question once per month and I will go research to answer that for you. So kind of like a mini version of the information you would get in a video, but on a question that you asked specifically. So if you are interested in any of that, please head to my Patreon page where all the details are and feel free to message me there if you have any questions or you can try on YouTube, but I can't guarantee I'll be able to answer it. But I do still really appreciate every single one of your comments. It really helps get these videos out there and it helps show me that you like seeing this content and want to see more knowing that you're commenting on it. I'm just, I'm sorry I can't reply a good chunk of the time. So yeah, please let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. Even if you are one of the unlucky comments that I don't get to see all of, I'll still get to see the first 100 characters or so, which I very much appreciate. And if you like this video, please like and share to help get this information out there. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to keep up on this non googleable science, as I like to say now. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you over on our new community.